Thank you guys very much. Can everybody hear me? Can we do something here? Let's see if we can do a live demo. So what I want to show off is Scaffold ETH. So Scaffold ETH uh, is a repo that helps you get started quickly building applications. If you uh, uh, go to the repo, you can go to, if you just Google Scaffold ETH, basically you're going to find it here. Scaffold ETH, right? And that is the repo. It's just, uh, it, it's a DAP package that comes uh, with everything you need with hard hat and uh, React on the front end. So what I want to do is just basically build a quick little app. Uh, but before I do that, just to make sure that everybody knows, like the most important thing here is speed run Ethereum. I'm on Eric's laptop here, so hopefully all this works. There we go. Well, okay. So most important thing of the talk, if you know developers that are thinking about getting into Web3, if you are a developer thinking about getting into Web3, if you are a mobile developer, a DevOps guy, whatever it is, Go to speedrun Ethereum and it will help you onboard quickly. A couple of weeks, you can have the whole Web3 mental model. Uh, it, it, there's an intro video and then you'll use Scaffold ETH to go through building a simple NFT, a staking app, a token vendor. Then you'll build a DEX and it'll kind of get you into this little social network of other builders. Oh. Oh, wow, pretty wide. Cool, no, that's, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> the, the, the point here being, uh, I spent a lot of time in mentorship sessions with a lot of developers from around the world, and I uh, found what works and what doesn't, and what is a good way to teach the mental model for Web3. I think that this is a really good example. The, the staking app is probably the first challenge you'll take on. It's not going to be tutorial hell, hell where it like guides you through everything. You're going to have to think for yourself and build a smart contract yourself, so you will need a little bit of solidity knowledge going into it, but you can get that kind of up here and it kind of explains it. But uh, building a decentralized staking app really is a superpower of Ethereum. Getting people who don't trust each other to coordinate, right? Getting jerks to coordinate financially is something that you can do with Ethereum. And this is going to teach you how to do that. It's just a few lines of solidity. So most important thing, if you're a developer, if you know developers, tell them to speed run Ethereum. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, we've got an extra 20 minutes. I can try to deploy an app and we'll see how we do here. So uh, here is when, when you get Scaffold ETH downloaded, you'll fire up uh, Hardhat with Yarn Chain. You'll fire up a React app with Yarn Start. And then you can just Yarn Deploy all you want, and you can YOLO your app to localhost. Let me see if I can make that way bigger. There we go. So we're just deploying an app. Now if we go over here, here is our front end. So let me, let me do that deploy again. Yarn deploy. I think I need to do a dash dash reset for, there we go. Let's force it. All right. So yarn deploy. And we're going to deploy another smart contract. And we'll see that show up right over here. So the second smart contract shows up there. And let's try that one more time. OK. Yarn deploy again. Now watch over here. We should see that. There we go. A new contract, right? So is that audio OK? Is that OK? Oh, get, get that mic out of here is what he said. <laughs> okay, so, so we're able to uh, quickly deploy uh, a contract and then we can use an app to interact with it, right? So let's dive in and look at this contract real quick. We've got uh, a string purpose, just some arbitrary purpose, and then we have uh, a function called set purpose, right? And something really neat in there, thanks to Hardhat, we've got a nice console log in our smart contract. Woo wee. Okay, so then over on the front end, I'm going to grab some funds from the faucet. You'll notice that we're not using MetaMask yet. We're on localhost and we're using burner wallets. No worries about chain IDs or nonces or even using some of your insecure MetaMask, you know, production accounts, right? We're just making a burner wallet and we're using it quickly. So I can say hello world here and we are setting the purpose. Okay, so let's start writing a smart contract. Let's get into it. Uh, let's see, what, what can we do here? Oh, let's show the console log real quick, right? Let me show that console log one more time. If I say, hey, 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 yeah, boom, and then we see the console log over there. That address said, hey, hey, hey. Okay, another thing I want to show is wallets. If I open an incognito window and I go to localhost 3000, I'm going to go to the app. You'll notice we've kind of got green guy over here, and then we've kind of got like old pink guy over here. Look at that smile. He's really smiling about something. Uh, let's go ahead and grab him some funds from the faucet, and let's go and say, hey, I'm pink guy, right? Woo. 
Okay, and pink guy is also interacting with the contract. Green guy can go read that. So we're just showing that this is kind of like this massive multiplayer kind of vending machine that we can interact with with anything. And also, I want to just show that those those burner wallets work that way, where if you spin up a new uh, browser, you'll get a new burner wallet to interact with your app. So the, the key here is that you're able to make small changes over here in your solidity and have kind of big results happen and be able to tinker with it over here in the front end and just kind of get a feel for things. So I would like to, I don't know, let's, let's make a token. Let's see what happens here. Contract, uh, I probably need to uh, go to, let's see, Open Zeppelin, right? Token, contract, something like that. Let's go over here. I'm gonna do lots of copy and pasting. Best, the best developers do lots of copy pasting. Oh, this isn't gonna take me to the GitHub, is it? Here we go, here we go. What I wanna do is just bring in some token and let's see. Oh, let's go, here we go. And then copy that, right? Okay, so, ooh, almost. Something like, oh man, I did it totally wrong there. Uh, <laughs> something like that, I think, is going to work, right? Oh no, Eric. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, here we go. <laughs> now let's save that. What is this? Like, is ERC20, and then we do like a little ERC20 over here, and this is going to be like Dubai coin or something like that. Uh, and DBC, huh? DBC. Okay, something like that, right? Let's see. Uh oh, it's not liking that. Let's go ahead and yarn compile or yarn deploy over here and see what it yells at us about. Did I save that? I think I did. Okay. Uh, oh no. Oh no. What did I do wrong? Oh, here. I'm sorry. There we go. Please work. <laughs> oh no. Here we go, here we go. This is gonna be it. Make us a token, please. Yes, okay, so now we've deployed a token, or we deployed a token locally. Thank you. <laughs> it's 2020 and we deployed a token. <laughs> so what you'll see here though, over on the front end is that, you know, a lot of this interface has changed. That dynamic interface has changed to have some new functions here. And that's pretty cool. What I wanna do is maybe build like a mint function and, and we'll make it payable, right? And we'll say something like, Actually, no, let's just have people pay the gas, right? Let's, let's, have, let's just have a mint function that anybody can call. We're not gonna set a purpose. We're not gonna do that, but what we're gonna do is have them mint something, right? Uh, we'll just uh, mint to the message dot sender, uh, maybe like one ether, right? Something random like that. And then let's go back over here and deploy that. And you're kind of just kind of iterating back and forth. You're tinkering with your solidity. You're kind of learning. You're testing your assumptions. And then over on the other side pops out uh, uh, another mint function here somewhere. There we go. And if we call mint, there we go. Now we can see that total supply going up as we're minting, right? Okay. And then let's do, let's see. So we're allowing people to mint. How, how long do I go for here? Oh, no, no. Depending on how much I'm going to Okay, so we got about 15 minutes. Okay, so let's see. What else can we add to this to make it more interesting? Maybe like some require function that uh, only lets people like mint today or something like that, right? Is the lock.timestamp maybe uh, needs to be what? Like less than, uh, oh, we're going to have to have a now, right? We're going to have to track some UNT 256 like public now are deployed, right? And we'll set deployed when we deploy it to the block.timestamp. Okay. And then we'll have to make sure that block.timestamp is less than uh, like deployed plus uh, what, 3,600 times 24 or something like that. Totally just dogging this out. Who knows what'll happen? 
you know, happy little trees and whatnot. Just kind of putting something together here. Just showing you that you as the builder, you don't have to be a genius. I am not a genius. You can just get in here and start tinkering around and kind of learn Ethereum as you go. Uh, so now I'm guessing that uh, our mint function is only going to work for the day. We let people mint something. All right, let, let's go back to that idea of that purpose and setting the purpose. So I'm going to redo that. You know, I, I'm going to have to, I'm just going to do this. This is going to be crazy. I'm going to redo, I'm going to undo a whole bunch. Boy, I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> I want that set purpose function back actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, please don't mess up. <laughs> Okay, what I want to do is I want to have maybe a set purpose function now, and I want to set it up so the user has to um, burn, right? Let's see, let's have them burn uh, from message.sender uh, one of those tokens, okay? So you, you can go to the contract and you can mint some for just basically spending the gas. And then any time later on, like this is only going to work for a day, but then any time later on, we allow someone to get in here and burn one of their tokens to set the purpose. So we have like this, maybe like this attestation machine that we're building here that we charge people some tokens to, to use. And let's see if that works. I probably am not going to add anything more to it. Uh, if I had my own laptop, I would probably have some other examples that I could copy and paste in here and do things uh, a little bit wilder, but I feel like just to be safe and make sure I get this thing all the way to production. I, I think that's about the end of, of what I want to go with. But let's test it first uh, locally. Uh, I should be able to mint a few. We should be able to grab my address here and check my balance of. You'll notice how like there's this nice blocky preview here. And when I click that, I can see the result. You probably can't see it, but it says three ETH right there, right? And if I go mint another one. So we're gonna allow people to mint for a day if I wrote the code right, not sure if I did, but they should be able to mint for a day. And then at any time in the future, they can uh, go to, the set purpose function and they can say hello and it should burn one of their tokens when they do that so now my balance should go down and let's make sure that works Ooh, yes very nice okay so our app is working uh, now you'd spend you, you wouldn't normally give your users this clunky interface you would spend some time building out an example UI You'd, you'd spend some time like creating controlled uh, uh, state within React. We'd probably you know, show your balance and do a lot of other things. I'm just gonna assume that there's a lot of React developers out there and you could shred through this and whatever you want. And I'm just gonna give us this ugly uh, uh, UI to, to play around with. But we have our set purpose and we have our, uh, our mint. I wonder if I could even, nah, it's not even worth it. Okay, let's, let's, let's put this thing out into production, okay? So uh, what we need to do, so now that you've tinkered around and you've got your app ready to go, it's a really kind of a short step to go to production uh, from Scaffold ETH. We'll need to yarn generate an account real quick. What network are we gonna go to? <laughs> that might be the other question. I need to have some, some ETH on some network. I might actually just try mainnet <laughs> unless anybody's like, Hardly against that. Any, anybody, any hard nose on Maidenet, or should I go for it and see what happens? Okay, okay, okay. All right, so here's Yarn account. So what I did is I did a Yarn generate. Now, uh, I, I saw a, a demo yesterday where uh, they were passing around private keys. You really shouldn't be pr passing around private keys. Scaffold ETH will create a mnemonic for you within your directory. When I do a Yarn generate, I've got a mnemonic here. All right, now I'm gonna use a punk wallet. Punk wallet. If you've ever been to punkwallet.io, you get a little nice, cute, little deterministic punk. Here, here, let me show it, let me show it. Uh, punkwallet.io. You get a nice, like, deterministic little punk here. Look at that, look at that. And then you can kind of scan that, and when you scan that uh, with, here, let me, here, let me try. Oh, this, is this gonna use my camera? It's gonna use your camera? All right, here we go, here we go. Oh, you have to do, oh, hello. Hi, everybody. Hearts, hearts, hearts. <laughs> so here's my punk wallet, and if I show it, there it is. There's my little zombie. So we can see that I'm sending some money uh, from this punk to my little, my little zombie. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that same thing here. I'm gonna scan this QR code, and I'm gonna send like 150 bucks right now. Boom, okay. Just send $150 on mainnet Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now uh, I'm gonna assume that that will go in a little bit. We'll wait for that block to get mined. And then what do you do? You yarn deploy uh, dash dash network mainnet, right? Mainnet. And let's, you know what? Let's be a little bit more surgical about our gas usage too. Uh, how do I see the files here? Top left. Top, 
that one? There we go. Got it. Uh, let's get into our hard hat config, and I think there's like a mainnet. What's, uh, what's mainnet gas at? Anybody got the mainnet gas going on right now? Maybe like 40 GUI should be safe, right? All right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Yarn deploy mainnet. <laughs> a contract that we just wrote out. I just installed scaffold ETH on Eric's computer. We just wrote this contract out. Now we're deploying uh, to mainnet. We've got a transaction hash. That's a good start. All right, all right. <laughs> so you'll have to make one other change. We did that dash dash network. Now what we need to do is our app is still pointed at localhost. So we need to make one other change here and we'll change our front end. It, we didn't spend a lot of time in the front end, but the front end is here, and you can spend a lot more time getting your UI looking right. But the one thing I'm going to change is I'm just going to point our app at mainnet. And, and before I do this, I want to come back over here and talk about this for a second. So see, see this address? This is a, a, an address component in Scaffold ETH. Anytime you build a decentralized app, you're always going to have addresses that you want to display. Anytime you display an address, it has that nice blocky preview. It has a nice copy. But this also goes to a block explorer. I have no idea where it goes on localhost. Actually, it goes to Etherscan. This isn't going to be a very good demo. If I were to switch to Optimism or something here and hit save, I'm going to hit save and it's going to go to mainnet and nothing's going to change because it was already going to mainnet. But but uh, if I were to set this to Optimism or Arbitrum or uh, Polygon, and then I were to click this, it would take me to the Polygon Block Explorer. So by changing this one thing in your app, you point your whole app at that new network, and all of that address links and all the things that are network specific switch over to that new network. OK, so our app is actually ready, and it's on mainnet. I'm guessing our contract is on mainnet. There, sh there she is. Woo-wee. OK, so this is, we're halfway done, right? If you're cool enough that you can deploy a contract and people will come interact with it on Etherscan, like if you're DOM level cool, but most of us are not DOM level cool, we need to also build an app that goes along with it, right? So how do we get this app into production? Well, we need to yarn build, right? We need to get a static version of our app going and then I'll push it up to Surge or something. And then everyone out there, if you want, you could get on and uh, actually mint some of these tokens and do uh, hit our attestation machine. So let's see, I want to give, maybe I'm going to give this burner wallet a little bit of uh, mainnet ETH also. So let's jump over to, unless we want to use MetaMask, we'd have to use your MetaMask. I don't know. I got, I got Flask installed. It's at test. Oh, okay. Let's not mess around with it then. Let's go all let's go all burner wallets. Shout out to MetaMask though. At this point, you really want to use MetaMask. You should not be YOLOing ETH on mainnet with a burner wallet. It's just not like it's just made for not mainnet networks. But we're gonna go for it uh, just to see what happens here. Okay, so if I send like seventy sixty-five dollars, sure. Go. I'm gonna send sixty-five dollars for my punk. Uh oh. Oh, I've got like a base fee error. That was super weird. Uh, we may have to use a MetaMask. Let's try that again. Uh, not a thousand. It sent fine to that other address. I'm not sure. I'm getting like a base fee error now. I wonder if I've done something really wrong here. Do you, do you have mainnet Ethereum in your MetaMask? Should we connect it? Let's try it. You need money in it? Yeah, I can send money. Well, I thought here. Yeah, can you type a password real quick? No looking, no looking. Sound it out. <laughs> How are we doing on time here, too? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. You can pick up the minutes oh, doxed. Sorry. Uh, this is in my test wallet. Okay. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's like this nice little, hey, you have the wrong network selected. You need to be on mainnet. Cool. We'll prompt you to go to mainnet. Awesome. Do you have any mainnet? You don't have any mainnet dollars? Let, let's try it. Let me, let me try sending you some. Let me try redoing this. I don't know why it didn't let me send it at first. Uh, let's try sending another hundo. Please work fourth try. I think it did. I didn't get an error that time. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we got a hundo coming in here to your MetaMask. Uh, I'm just going to assume that's going to happen in a little bit. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to call the mint function. So as soon as we have some money, we're going to call mint. Oh, oh, our app is ready. Okay, so we did a yarn build. Now I'm going to do a yarn surge. Uh, dash dash domain. What do we want to call this thing? Uh, DBC coin. Oh, man. Dubai coin, AI coin, <laughs> surge.sh. All right. Now, normally you would also push this to IPFS. It's not really a decentralized app if it just lives on surge. Uh, uh, 
super secure password. Let's see if this works. All right, now our, our website is actually uploading. You would want to upload to IPFS and other places. You would want to give, I mean, like uploading to IPFS and giving everybody the IPFS CID would be like the way to go here. But we're going to also upload it to Surge, and we're going to have the website ready to go for anybody who wants to visit it. So uh, now you should be able to go to dubaicoin.surge.sh on your phone or laptop or uh, device of choice, and you should get the app that we just built in the last 20 minutes on Eric's computer. <laughs> there it is. Okay, let's connect in Eric's MetaMask again. Okay, okay. Actually, no, let's do, let's do Wallet Connect this time. Let's Wallet Connect in. Here we go. Connect, Wallet Connect. Let me bring in my rainbow. Let's, let's just, you know, like open up the ecosystem a little bit here. And let me scan. After I send 100 bucks to your wallet. <laughs> Let's see. So it's thinking, it's thinking. Pedro, it's thinking. Pedro, it's still thinking. Wallet Connect. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We might be switching back to MetaMask. Ah, uh, it might be the internet, though. It might not be. Let's see, turning off Wi-Fi. Let's try that one more time. You Rainbow. can take a few extra minutes if you absolutely need <laughs> Sorry, to. Sorry, bro. No, it's fine. fine. Here we go. Let's try connecting in with Wallet Connect. And let's use our rainbow. Please work second try on a different network. It's still loading, Pedro. Somewhere between Mike Demarai and Pedro, I shaky my fist. <laughs> and probably just the internet, right? It's probably not either of their faults, but it's fun to, fun to throw blame around, throw shade. Okay, I can't get it to work. Let's go back to Eric's MetaMask. And there's 100 bucks on it. Let's go. Oh, I didn't even need to type in a password. Why didn't I just do that? Okay, so now we are at DubaiCoin.Surge.SH. We have our ugly UI that we could make look a lot better. Uh, Eric has a balance of zero. Okay, and let's go down here and call the mint function and pay some gas. All right, what's it going to cost us? Woo, six dollars. Totally worth it. Totally worth it. All right, so you have the next 24 hours to mint Dubai coin at dubaicoin.search.sh, and then you can use that Dubai coin as an attestation coin to get back onto this website and go to set purpose. And each time you set the purpose, it's going to burn one of your Dubai coins and uh, set the purpose for everyone to see on uh, dubaicoin.search.sh. And we were able to do that really in about 20 minutes. So this is for rapid uh, decentralized application prototyping, right? There's so many times I spent weeks or months building an app, working on getting a smart contract just right, handing it over to a front-end developer. They spend another few weeks getting the user experience and the UI right, and then you give it to your customers and no one gives a uh, hooey about it. So you, you really want to get your product to market and get it in people's hands first and see how it's used. Right now we're spending a lot of time with DAO tooling. Uh, DAOs are decentralizing and they need sufficiently decentralized tools and they need them yesterday. So we're building all sorts of weird things to like give tips out to, to everyone in the DAO or buy a beer for everyone who signed on a multi-sig. All sorts of like little tools that we need to make decentralization work and make DAOs work. And so that space is just growing rapidly and instead of spending six months in the dark building a DAO tool, you should be spending six days with Scaffold ETH, building a couple different prototypes and see what people need. Okay, uh, did, our, did our transaction happen? Let's check and see if we have a balance now. Oh. Oh, yeah, we got one. All right, here we go. I'm, I'm going to set the purpose to the most important thing here is speedrun Ethereum. If you have developers that are interested in learning about Ethereum, if you have Web2 developers, anybody who's good at programming, they can go to speedrun Ethereum and within a week have most of the mental model. And it's a very uh, straightforward, quick uh, curriculum. Let's let's see old speed run Ethereum one last time before we're done. Remember speed run Ethereum. I'm memeing it into existence. You're hearing me. It's, you're getting sleepier. Speed run Ethereum. <laughs> okay, awesome. I bet I bet that happened. Oh, we're still waiting for the purpose to get set. But holy moly, we just deployed. We just built and deployed a smart contract to mainnet, and then we built and deployed the front-end application that talks to that mainnet contract and put it on a public uh, 
URL so anybody in the world can now go to that for the next 24 hours and mint that coin and then use that coin for an attestation for some reason. Uh, I think there it is. It's set. Speed run Ethereum. The purpose is good. All right. I think that's it. Thank you, guys. Give it up for Austin Griffith. Thank you, guys. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Speedrun Ethereum. Yes. Capital D.